Hi guys, Janice here. Welcome back. As promised, the video for this week will be covering the glycocalyx calyx and what happens when it becomes dysfunctional or stops working altogether. Before getting to that, however, I thought it would be beneficial to clarify some points I made in previous videos regarding the effects of diet and the angion method success. Outside of genetic deficiency or mutation, the four biggest health risks listed in order for glycocalyx dysfunction are as follows. Oxidized fatty acids slash lipids, hyperglycemia, recreational drug use, and a sedentary lifestyle. In today's world, only a small subsection of the population does not regularly engage in either eating animal-based products, oil-based cooking, high glycemic index meals, or using commercially available substances like tobacco and alcohol. For decades now, scientists have been shouting about the very real danger of all of these health risks, but for most, these alarming realities have been kept from the public eye or covered up with blatant and outright lies. Well, I'm here to tell you those lies are taking years off your life and years and degrees off the quality of your life. For quite some time now, the scientific community simply did not have the means or technology to accurately depict the finer structures inside blood vessels, like the glycocalyx or its minute parts. That said, they were able to visualize the endothelial cells and do experiments on how they function in the presence of various chemicals typically found in dietary sources. Pretty quickly, scientists did accurately conclude dietary factors like oxidized fats, oxidized cholesterols, processed sugars, smoking, and alcohol use were extremely hard on blood vessels. But it's only been within the last decade or so that the exact manner in which all this damage occurs has been revealed. All of these habits cause near immediate thinning of the carbohydrate-based gel that protects the inside of our blood vessels, or it directly damages the protein-like glycocalyx sensor hairs that helps the body mechanically sense sheer stress. Between these two outcomes, it's a recipe for things like atherosclerosis, heart disease, hypertension, infection, wasting diseases, and higher rates in general of all-cause mortality. More than just dietary factors, in recent years the sedentary lifestyle has been a silent but growing killer of people around the world. As the modern world improves our lives, more and more humans begin to do less and less, all to the detriment of our health yet again. Scientists have repeatedly noticed that even in populations engaging in high-risk behaviors like the above-mentioned dietary habits and recreational drug use, they were able to benefit quite a bit from various types of exercises, chief among them being aerobic-based training regimens. This comes as no surprise when studies began coming to light that demonstrated exercise caused significant increases in the amount of shear stress exerted on the internal lining of blood vessels and that shear stress itself was an atheroprotective force. This means that shear stress is able to prevent plaque formation and caused increased thickness of the glycocalyx gel coating. Even more incredibly, it improved overall sensitivity to shear stress itself, which led to improvements in nitric oxide release in response to fluid movements inside blood vessels. Setting all of this aside, however, this video is primarily devoted to the progression of disease. What I'll be laying out is a fairly linear series of symptoms that ultimately counts down the life of an organism. Before, before any other symptoms present themselves, mental function begins to be affected. This often starts out innocuously as an inability to remember a given word or phrase, mood changes, repetitive habits that you just can't seem to break, transient bouts of consciousness where you temporarily forget what you're doing, leaky memory, where short-term memory has trouble transferring to longer-term storage. Many times, this aspect of vascular issues can result in seemingly insurmountable mental blocks, which can be deeply frustrating. Beyond these initial stages, memory assimilation itself can begin to falter. This displays itself as an increasingly difficult time learning new pieces of information or drawing new conclusions from previously known facts. 
it's right about at that stage that a person begins noticing the onset of problems and attempts to rectify the situation. The unfortunate story, however, is that rectifying these problems requires neuroplasticity, which falters as vascular health tanks. Oftentimes, without outside intervention, problems begin spiraling out of control over a period of years, especially when referring to dopamine spiking habits. Not too long after mental health problems set in, peripheral vascular complications begin presenting themselves more and more. Many times, this will start off as calloused feet. An extremely powerful outward sign of a person's cardiovascular health can be found at the extremes of the limbs. Properly functioning blood vessels are crucial to maintaining these outlying regions. Before calluses, a very common sign of future problems is an increased sensitivity to, to changes in temperature. While it is a very common belief that these are harmless, they are very much harbingers of worse things to come. Typically, this increased sensitivity centers around overly constricted blood vessels. Blood vessels that remain constricted for too long quickly cause fibrosis, tissue starvation, and this causes nerve pain along the way, I might add. A common side effect of this constriction is cold hands and feet, or mottled red spots mixed in with tinges of blue and white. While this aspect of vascular health was once only a problem that plagued older members of society, children and younger adults are displaying these problems at an alarming rate. Once peripheral complications set in, muscular pains are an inevitable point of progression. Typically, these start out as bizarre instances of muscle weakness and pain during exertion, most notably in the lower parts of the legs and more commonly in the arms as the problems progress. These problems, if left unchecked for too long, lead to disproportionately smaller legs in older males and unusually stubborn calves in younger men that simply refuse to develop even with regular stimulation. An unfortunate aspect of these problems is that swelling also sets in at the extremes of the limbs and can actually mask these symptoms. As these peripheral vascular complications slowly stack up, it starts to spell out future cardiovascular complications. Before this results in a heart attack, however, all causes for mortality begin to rise. This is due almost entirely to organ damage, something approaching 99% of our vascular system, our, our organ system, rely on healthily functioning capillary beds. As these delicate structures falter or become compromised, tissue death quickly results. Much like the ending stages of peripheral vascular complication, this can present itself as undersized or malfunctioning organs. These malfunctions, more often than not, only result in a faster rate of health decline. One such example of these complications is type 2 diabetes. By this point, if death has not already occurred from vascular complications, quality of life has taken a serious hit and the person in question is more than likely already heavily medicated just to sustain their lives. Now, I'd like to inform everyone that all of this is happening before many even turn 30. While health statisticians love saying how people are living longer, it's an outright lie. In fact, I'd go so far as to say people are more unhealthy than ever. These days, a box of processed sugar and GMOs costs less than vegetables. Whenever life expectancy figures are accurately calculated in relation to the cost of living, we find people are barely living into their 50s. This is hardly surprising when we remember that salt and sugar levels continue to rise in our foods both of which are very hard in the glycocalyx, which is crucial for proper blood vessel functioning. For many, the early warning signs of vascular complication may have you feeling a particular sense of dread. It's at this time I'd also like to say that today's world is growing more and more conscious of health complications and the importance of exercise. This may be a good time to go on those walks with that friend, pick up a physically demanding hobby, use that gym membership, or maybe start taking a much harder look at your diet. Whatever your condition or station in life, it's important to remember that options exist and change can happen. Okay guys, today's video was a bit somber, but I've got some pretty awesome news to make up for it. 
after being absolutely inundated with requests. In my next video, I'll be going in-depth and explaining the underlying mechanics of smooth muscles. This will set the stage for some other big releases soon to come. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see everyone next time.